Hey there, how's it going everybody? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be learning how to map social media. So we're going to be using one of the social media platforms and, then, and in this case, we're going to be using Twitter. So what we're going to be doing is using Twitter, we're going to be getting the data from Twitter uh, that comes from people, so like from certain individuals, and then we're going to be using this data in order to produce a map or, or any other spatial data analysis that we need to perform. So in this tutorial, we're going to be learning a few things. So first of all, what you need to do in order for you to go through this tutorial, so let me just outline the few things right here while I'm done. So we're going to test the thing. So the first thing that you need to do is you need a, a Twitter developer account. So the Twitter developer's account. So you can just go over to Twitter. I'm just going to type in the URL here. So it's going to be Twitter. Uh, it's going to be developers uh, dot Twitter dot com. So you can go and get your developer's account here on Twitter. And then what also what we need also is we need um we need an environment. We need to create environment uh, variables, environment variables, and to do that we need a library which is called uh, dot .env. So I, uh, I already have a tab here which is opened, and I'm gonna be discussing that later on. And then we also need uh, a Python library which is also named uh, Twippy. So those are three things that you need in order for you to go through this tutorial successfully. So let's just get started and uh, sign into your Arcus Online platform. So I'm just gonna run that, and uh, it's basically going to which authenticate us to like to get to sign in into your organization your account. So we're just gonna leave that for a few minutes. Okay, so while it's trying to authenticate us into your organization account, I'm just gonna navigate to this tab and explain more about virtual about uh, about creating uh about creating about creating environment variables. So as you notice, since we're gonna be using the Twitter API, I'm gonna be entering some uh, I'm gonna be entering some confidential information. Which is uh, is basically uh not for public usage. So because but if I get to display the information, people can uh people can actually get to abuse this information. So what you need to do is for the sake of this tutorial, you need to you need to run a pip install python dot uh, env, and then you get this library, and then you can also get to create uh you can also get to create a dot env file, which is basically a store. For all your credentials which are actually confidential so i'm just going to paste in uh, this uh this link this tutorial within the description below so that you can actually get to read more about creating this dot .env file and you can actually get to keep your credentials are uh, confidential so now let's just go back to this and sign into our chairs online portal and then we're just going to be uh so just entered my password here and then it's going to try to authenticate and uh, that was a success Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to enter our Twitter credentials. I'm just going to create a markdown here, and then I'm just going to create a cell and tell you that this is uh, where we're going to be storing uh, our Twitter credentials. So in order for us to get our Twitter credentials, we need to import a few things here. So I'm just going to import the OS library, and then remember from this tutorial that I that I indicated, which is in the description below. We're just going to importing. We're just going to be importing those libraries. We're just going to say from dot env import load dot um, env, and then we're just going to run. We're just going to call the function again dot so oops, dot um, load dot env, and then we put uh, and then we call the function, but we don't pass any parameters inside that. So. This is basically where I'm going to be typing like all my credentials. So as you can see, we need to have a, a Twitter consumer key in there. So this tweet consumer so this Twitter consumer key is actually stored in that .env file. So I'm just going to be typing out the path and the and the libraries which actually get those uh, environment variables, so that uh, you guys don't actually get to abuse some of my my credentials because I would actually get burned. So I'm just gonna pause this video and then type this out in order for us not to waste our much time doing this. Uh, okay so since we've typed this out uh, now I'm just gonna need to run the cell block in order for it to import uh, everything that we just stated here. So now what we need to do is uh, we now need to we now need to authenticate these credentials because what it basically did here was just to create our variables which are going to be storing these credentials. So in order for us to authenticate these are credentials, so I'm just gonna type in some markdown and uh, say here we need to authority, we need to authenticate our credentials. Oops, I think there's a wrong spelling there. 
Yeah, anyway, never mind. So I'm just gonna continue with this tutorial. Okay, so I'm just gonna speak, say auth, and then within that auth variable, we're gonna be calling that Tweepy library. So remember, we, we imported uh, Tweepy here. So if you don't know how to, uh, how you can, oh, okay. So I think I skipped this part. So basically, you can out, you can even install Tweepy, uh, like via via Jupyter notebook. So all you need to do is just, you just type uh, that exclamation mark, then say pip install Tweepy. And then you basically run the cell and it's, it's and, and then it's going to import uh, it's going to import this tweepy library okay so let's just continue what we're doing so you should say up and then is equal to tweepy and then from tweepy i need to call in like the auth functions which are basically going to authenticate us and then i'm going to call them in the auth handler and then for this auth handler i'm going to call in the consumer and I'm going to pass in the consumer key as a as a variable, so as a parameter, in order for us to in order for it to actually uh, dedicate this. So I've passed in the consumer key and the consumer secret which I've got from Twitter, which I actually stored in my .env file, and then I'm going to pass in um, set um, set access token for this uh, this Twitter developer account, and then I'm passing the access key. And then I'll pass in the access uh, secret like that. And then what we need to do now is we need to create an API. Oops, we need to create an API project within our notebook. So I'm just gonna call in the API as a variable. So I'm just gonna call in the API as a variable, and then I'm gonna pass in the Tweepy library and say uh, what do we want to do with Tweep? We want to use the API. And then we want to use it to authenticate us. Okay, so I'm just gonna basically going to run this and see what we get. Okay, so the, the so the cell has been executed without any errors. So that means basically everything that we just entered is actually correct. Okay, so now that we have authenticated ourselves, uh, I'm just gonna tell you uh, what we can basically do with this Twitter API. So uh, I'm just gonna type in some markdown here. Then I say uh, what can we do? So basically with this Twitter API, you can uh, get tweets uh, with a certain user mention. You can also get a uh, tweet with a particular with a particular hashtag, hashtag, and then you can also get tweets uh, from a certain timeline. And then you can also get a uh, user account tweets, and then you can also get all tweets. Uh, by a certain oops by a certain user okay so this is basically what we can do from what i read from the documentation uh yeah yeah from the tribute documentation so you have to take into consideration that uh like just like every api it has certain limits so maybe you can try to extract our tweets with a certain hashtag for yeah like for example if you try to, to if you try to extract tweets with the hashtag COVID-19 without setting a limit for those tweets, it's basically so you're basically going to you're basically going to exhaust the API and you're not going to get anything. So it's always wise to use uh, this Twitter API uh, cautiously because you might even get banned from uh, from over exhausting the resources. Okay. So what do you want to do like for this tutorial? First thing uh, I need to show you how we can get uh, tweets for a particular account. So we're just gonna put some mark down again, and then also in order for us to get our tweets from from a particular account, what we need to do is we just need to pass in like a few parameters. So let me just do this uh, while you're watching. So I'm just gonna say I uh, call this variable my tweets. Then I'm gonna put this equal to the tweet p uh, library, and then I'm gonna call in the cursor, call in the cursor method, and then I'm gonna call in the API. And then I say I need to get from a user timeline. From a user timeline, I need to search by a screen name. Oops. By a screen name. And what screen name do I need to search for? So basically, on this tutorial, I'm just going to be using my Twitter account uh, in order for us to see because I don't want to be violating anyone's privacy policy. So I'm just going to basically going to be using my account. So I'm just going to type in severe underscore junior there which is my twitter handle and then i'm gonna say tweet uh tweet mode i basically want to extract like the whole uh, 
like the whole data which comes in for Twitter. So it's gonna say extended, extended here. And then uh, how many items do I want to retrieve? So this is basically the parameter we are talking about, which which gives us the limit. So I basically want to retrieve our 10 items. So if you don't pass in any variable here, it's basically going to retrieve all the tweets which are coming from the in from this account. So it's always wise to use a parameter which uh, which sets a limit. You can also uh, like like navigate the Twitter documentation and get to see what kind of limits uh, one can actually get from using this API. So I'm basically here, basically going to execute this script, and uh, it is executed successfully, meaning that there's no there are no errors within this script. Okay, so let's move on to the next section whereby we actually need to retrieve uh, these tweets now. So I'm just going to pass into my thing, retrieve all of the tweets. Oops. So I'm just going to retrieve those tweets. So in order for us to retrieve those tweets, we're just going to create a dictionary. So I'm just going to pass in, I'm just going to create a list and then uh, I'm just going to call it uh, retrieved tweets and then I'm going to put them for the retrieved tweets in a list. And then within the list, I'm gonna call the looping function, which is for, and then we'll say for tweet in uh, my tweets. Remember, this is the variable that is that actually contains all these ten tweets. So uh, for tweet in my tweets, I'm just gonna, mm, I'm just gonna uh, give that an instruction. What do I need to do? So I'm just gonna say um, for the retrieved. I shouldn't have chosen this variable because it's actually a pain typing this variable name and I have to make sure that the spelling is, is actually correct. Okay, so it's gonna say retrieve tweets. What do I need to do? I need to append each and every loop to that uh, like to this list which is currently empty. I need to append. So I'm just gonna append uh, this tweet dot uh, underscore JSON. So it's basically going to return like a JSON file and then I'm basically going to execute that and hopefully it executes without an error and and it did so now uh, what i need to do is i need to show you what uh, one tweet actually looks like so i'm just gonna call in this retrieve tweets i'm just gonna paste that copy that and paste that in order for us to avoid any spelling errors and then i need to get uh, the first tweet so i'm just gonna call in that um I'm just gonna call in that um like the index i'm showing you now know uh, we don't know much about indexes from our previous tutorial so this is basically going to retrieve the information from the first tweet so let's just run that and see what we get okay so here we have retrieved our adjacent format that we did here so as you can see it has a lot of information here which can actually be used by certain individuals so as you can see we have a lot of information so we have a this so actually this is the latest tweet which is on my account so as you can see, it was created at uh, created at Wednesday, uh, March 24, at around 14:32, 37 seconds. So this is the time zone which Twitter gave us, which is not the time zone of, like like the my region. So that means this should be plus uh, like plus two for the time zone in Harare, Zimbabwe. And then we also have a Twitter. Um, we also have like a tweet ID, and then we also get the like the full text of the tweet. So here I said, uh, check out my latest article. Oh, I messed up the COVID-19 data set and fixed it with Python. Okay, so that so that was my actually so that was uh, actually my latest tweet and I posted this via LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, we actually get a certain we actually get uh, like lots of information within this tweet. Okay, so basically what we need to do. Okay, so basically what we need to do here since we're going to be mapping out and creating special enabled data sets, we're going to be using the location. So do you guys uh, see anywhere it's written location here? So I'm actually looking for uh, somewhere it's written location. I'm sure there is a location. Yeah. So here's a location. So this is basically the location which I set on my profile. If you, if you navigate to my Twitter account, which is Severe Junior, so which is Severe underscore Junior, you actually find like on my profile page, there's uh, like there's a location which I set, which is the country in Harare, Zimbabwe, because this is the country where I reside. And here we have my profile description. So what do we need to extract here? We need to extract a few things. We need to extract the parameter which says I've created at. We also need to extract um, the full text of that tweet. We 
we also need to extract some of the entities within that tweet and we also need to extract the user mentions we can also need to extract the URL and obviously we need, we need to extract a, a location and maybe we might also need to know how many people retweeted so I'm just gonna say retweet count and then convert this into markdown so that we don't forget I'm just gonna execute that and it gives us this point okay so uh, right now what we're gonna be doing is we, we're now going to be searching using a certain hashtag because we need to map out a certain hashtag so remember uh, recently uh, it was a global surveys day on the 21st of March so I think this is a good point to start with so I'm just gonna say um, map out in the global surveys day so I'm just gonna type this in full global surveys day social media post so I'm just gonna map out these global surveys day social media posts so I'm just gonna call in a variable global surveys day gfd and then I'm gonna call in the tweet library and then I'm basically going to call in the searcher method so the cursor method and then I'll call in the API and tell it that we need to search and what do we need to search for declare that a queue and then we need to search for a certain hashtag so I'm just gonna say uh, the hashtag that I normally noticed was uh, this hashtag global surveyors day and then it uh, we need to get the tweet mode so I basically need to say I need this extended extended so I think I have a spelling problem okay so extended like this and then what do we need to do we need to paginate this so I'm just going to call in the pages so basically this pages are this pages are this pages function basically are like puts everything in a page in format you can also you can also create you can also pass in some parameters to say like for every page i need maybe like maybe like 10 tweets for every page but i'm, going, I'm just going to leave this blank and then i'm just going to run this and it was run successful without any errors so now what we need to do is we need to get we need to get the json for all these tweets so let's just convert that into markdown then we just execute that so to convert this uh, into JSON format, I'm just going to pass in another list and then call this all tweets. Then put that into an empty list for now. And then what we need to do is we need to call in the loop and say a uh, for page in uh, global service day variable GSD. What we need to do we also need to loop. Now we need to loop the tweets which are in, in the page which are in the page so and then what we need to do is we need to append all these tweets so I'm just gonna say all tweets dot append and then what we need to do is we need to append these tweets uh, in JSON format so I'm just gonna call in the JSON here and then it's basically going to execute that and it's trying to get all the tweets which have uh, this global surveys day okay so i had to pause the video because that was going to take uh like quite some time because i know a lot of surveyors were posting global surveys day and then more like like yeah the lots of lots of surveyors over the world we actually celebrate so now that we have this data in a json file what we need to do now is we just need to know how many tweets we actually retrieve so i'm just going to call in the length function and then we're just going to pass in those tweets as a parameter so we just want to see how many people like actually posted about global surveys day on twitter so i'm just going to say ran and then we notice that we have 230 tweets wow. so I, I actually thought that surveyors were not social media people but i actually noticed that uh, yeah people do actually post on social media so with these 230 tweets what are we going basically going to do with them Okay, so since this tutorial is all about mapping uh, these tweets all over the world, what we're going to be doing here is we, we actually need to create a data set. So I want to create a CSV file which I'm going to be publishing to my ArcGIS Online organizational account which, you, which, we, which later on we're going to be using to map out this social media post. So what we're going to be doing here is we have a certain, we have a few parameters. As you can see here, within our tweets we have URLs and we have text, we also have hashtags. 
So what I need to do here is I need to create a map which basically displays like everything. So let's say I actually get to click on the map and then this map actually gives me like text, like the, like the tweet and then the location, the number of retreats. And then if there are any links, these links should, be actually, should actually be clickable. So I'm just gonna create here a method which handles like all URLs within a tweet. So I'm just gonna say handle URLs within a tweet. So this is basically going to allow us to create a, like a section within our table which actually contains URLs which we can uh, get to embed within our tweet. So first of all, I need to, so here we're going to be using regular expressions. So if you don't know about regular expressions, I recommend that you get to like run a Google search and then you know how you can do, how you can perform regular expressions. So in order for us to use regular expressions, we're going to need to import the regular expression library and to, and to do that, we just need to import RE. So I'm just going to comment this out and say regular expressions library. So now that we've imported our regular expressions, we now need to create a function which handles uh, every URL which is contained within which is contained within a text. So we're going to declare a function, type in the def, and then we say handle tweet um, tweet text, and then oops, I think I was going too far there. So we just say tweet uh, text as a parameter there. So I'm sure you you basically noticed that we we saw somewhere where it was written tweet text uh, up there. Then so what we need to do with this, we need to create a function is going to basically going to be looping all over the tweet text and looking for these URLs and then it's going to be creating a table of URLs. So what we need to do now is we need to run this for the loop. So I'm just gonna say for every URL in and then we call in that regular expression find or and what do we want to find we need to find something so I'm just basically going to call in this read what do we need to read we need to read everything which has this HTTPS like that and then what we need to do here is we need to call in HTTPS like that and then we go in like I'm sure you, you, everyone has seen our like URLs and then we need to put this um, backslash and put an S there and then we say plus and then we uh, put a comma I don't know what, what comes first so let me just try putting this here and then we basically put a comma there I think I actually left some things up I think this is there, this is the syntax I'm, I think I'm actually forgetting the syntax let, let us just try this now and say our uh, tweet text then we put on those columns so what do you need to do now we need to say for every tweet text so I'm just gonna call in tweet text there is equal to tweet text what do we need to do we need to replace we need to replace those URLs and I'm just gonna call in an F string here which basically I'm going to be typing in some HTML here and within that uh, in this anchor tag we need to put in those URL parameters I'm sure for those who have done HTML uh, actually know what we're doing here and then we need to pass in those URLs again and then we just need to close in that anchor tag so this basically so this uh, F string here basically contains just an HTML if you don't know what this means I suggest that you actually go online and get to see how these uh, things work so we might see that uh, we have certain conditions oops i think i left out something here remember we opened an f string here but it actually didn't uh because this is a this is a string variable so i'm just going to put in a single quote there it's basically going to tell this, this f string ends here so what we need to do here we, we have certain conditions within our like within our expression so i'm just going to say if the length of the tweet text is uh, greater than or equal to 356 uh, what we need to do is we need to like put we need to just uh, truncate that text 
a lot of us do not to have like over like, like overloading text within our within our maps. So I'm just gonna say tweet text like that, and then we need to pass in uh, that variable which sorry that uh, length that we that we basically need. So I'm just gonna say 350 here, and then we basically put an put an put an ellipsis. And then we just close that so if our tweet is more than these words it's basically going to put an ellipsis for the rest of the tweet and then we're going to be providing the url where you can actually get to see like the rest of the tweet because we basically don't want to be flooding our whole map with text from people so let's just say here and then we put in a return tweet text like that well this is quite um this was quite uh, some some like some regular expression that we had to write so i hope you guys don't get lost so in order for you to understand more of these things you can basically just run a google search and get to know how you can use uh this how you can use these uh these regular expressions i recommend you go over to this website here so let's just say w3schools.com uh, com like this if you navigate to this address and then you probably get to find I think address is Python and then you can get to get to learn about regular expressions and you can get to know how you can uh, how you can use this. Okay so let me just execute this script and see what we get and the script was actually executed without any errors. Well we actually lack it there. Okay so now what we need to do is we now need to create a pandas data frame. Remember we've managed to handle uh, like the URLs and separate it some of these URLs from the text within our, like within our text, uh, within our tweets that we just extracted within the JSON file. So now we need to create a like a pandas data frame. But for us to create the pandas data frame, we need to have a table first. So here I'm going to be writing a long piece of code which basically needs a table. So I'm just going to create a table here. Create a table first. Okay, so here I'm going to be typing in some long code and in order for us to save time because I'm pretty much of a slow typer, I'm basically going to pause this video and then we're going to be resuming and when we resume, I'm going to be explaining uh, each and every each and every statement that I wrote within this uh, within the long piece of code which I'm going, basically going to write over here. So let me just uh, see it in a bit. Um, okay, so this is basically like the code which I was typing behind the scenes and uh, it's quite a long uh, piece of code and that would have taken up much of our time. But I'm going to be including uh, the source code to these notebooks within, yeah, like together, together with this video and so that you guys can actually get to see how you can basically use this code to, to like to extract uh, tweets and locations from Twitter. Okay, so here, what we did here in this first line, we created a list, an empty list, and we assigned a variable, all tweets which are refined. So previously, we assigned a variable which was named all tweets, but these tweets were not refined. So now, okay, so after putting that into a list, now what we did is uh, using the parameters that were given by Twitter. So as you can see above here, these are the list of parameters, which is quite huge, and we only selected a few which we wanted to use for this tutorial and then so using those parameters we now create um we now create columns for like for our table since we're creating a table so i've chosen the id which i just are uh, taking here so we just take it as it is and then and then here the column name is going to be named id and then i also decided to take the uh, like the time at which the tweet was created and uh, i also decided to take like the text of the tweet which is basically the full text of yeah, or what the person said or how they how, or how they celebrated uh, Clubus his day on the day. Okay, so now here we decided to take some hashtags. So using this try and accept, this basically means it's going to fetch for hashtags. So if we're just gonna uh, put it straight like what we did here, we might find out that some some tweets do not actually contain hashtags. So if we just do it this way, it's basically going to run into an error. So we put this try and uh, yes and accept uh, accept condition. So it's going to try to look for hashtags, 
and then convert those hashtags into a list and then it is going to loop over each and every hashtag and separating each and every hashtag by a comma and then uh, that's just going to be in in just one column and uh, yeah so uh, otherwise uh, if there's nothing else in that uh, like in that tweet if there are no hashtags so that basically means that row is basically it's basically just going to be empty and then now we're going to be searching for any user mentions so you might find out that i uh, let's say uh, yeah i tweeted out about global surveys day and then i tagged one person maybe maybe i tagged african surveys connect or I tagged uh, esri so so the account that i tagged is basically going to appear in the tweet and we just want to uh, like get the list of everyone who was who was tagged in tweet and then put that into a separate column and then also the same thing that we did here some tweets might actually contain like urls because people might just want to uh, like add like certain links to their maps or whatever they, they just want to display it like up to the public so this is basically going to search for all the urls using the using the urls algorithm that we stated above and then if there are no urls that column is basically going to be left out empty and obviously we need to search for a location and uh, you know some people on twitter actually uh, put their location on and off so this is basically going to get the location of the people who have turned it on and then this is going to be uh, the location of people who have turned it off so we're just going to use the try and accept um those try and accept conditions just to avoid us running into an error and then we're going to fetch the number of times tweet has been retweeted and yeah so this is basically what we do and we're just going to execute that and once we have executed that so now what we want to do is we want to create we want to construct that pandas data frame so in order to do that we need to import pandas but i'm just going to write some markdown here so i'm just going to say construct the pandas data frame okay so this pandas data frame now we all need to do since we're going to be dealing with this data frame we need for previous tutorials we need to import the pandas library and we put it as pd and then i'm just going to execute that okay so now what we're going to do is we need to call in a variable so i'm just going to name it tweets um data frame and oh it is equal to pd of uh, the pandas library so then i call the data frame then i call the data frame method and i call it that uh, i tell it that i want to convert all the tweets uh, which are refined which are contained within this list which I uh, quoted here I need to put this into a data frame and we're just gonna be doing a few things here so remember yeah I'm just gonna show you how you can you can play around with date and times so I'm just gonna see our uh, play around with oops around with date and time so what we need to do here is we need to uh, make sure that our date and time column is within the format that we actually are like remember there are certain time zones like a lot of time zones which exist and we just you know, need to specify our time zone which you need to convert our data to so we're just gonna say uh, using that uh, data frame that we just have and in the column which I just named created at above we're just going to equal that to PD I'm calling the library again and tell it to convert this uh, to make sure that this is a date and time column because sometimes our, maybe our time is uh, acting funny and doesn't get detected that easily so we're just going to tell it that this is going to be a date and time column and then I tell it the name of the column again and then now what we need to do is we need to call that uh, data frame again function and then we call out the name of the then we call it the name of the column and then now what we need to do is we need to call in that tweets uh, data frame again well this is quite repetitive but this is basically the, the structure from the documentation okay so this is created at again so now this is where we're going to be uh, placing some functions so we need to place the map function which we're basically going to be using the lambda uh, the lambda t which basically means time so i'm going to tell it that i need a time uh, dot time zone to convert that time zone to something so i'm just going to need to pass in the parameters which i need to convert here so 
if you're going to be converting this to a time zone you can specify that you need to convert this to utc or any other time zone wherever you are watching this tutorial for and yeah. so basically to avoid all the confusion i'm just going to leave this as none but whenever you want to convert to your time zone remember you can always put this single code and then you specify um, then you specify the time zone that you need to convert to so i'm just going to leave this as none like i said and then after leave that as none I'm just gonna need to print out the first um, four rows of this data frame. So I'm just gonna specify head, and then I say five there because this five is going to include the like the name, sorry, like the titles of this uh, data frame. So I'm just gonna execute that, and it's basically going to print out the first five rows of our data frame like this. So as you can see, like all the names of the columns which I've specif specified above are the ones that I actually are. Uh, written down here on every each and every column so now the last thing that we need to do is we need to save the csv remember we haven't saved anything it's just appended that frame so if we delete this and then we basically have to come back and rerun the script again and that might actually exhaust our our api access to twitter so what we need to do now is we need to uh we need to store this in a csv file so i'm just going to say uh, save to csv file and then we we'll run that and then so what i need to do is we need to create a variable uh, what variable name can i give that so since global service dm so say global service day tweets are equal to the tweets of the data frame which i declared above here the tweets data frame i need to um, i need to convert that to csv so just gonna call it the c to csv function and then i Put some open quotes here single quotes i mean and then i specify the path to which i want to save this to so i already have a folder here let me just open that i already have a folder which is the named data within my uh jupyter notebook so within my data uh here i have uh, I already have existing data so i'm just going to add this to that so let me just specify the name of the CSV. So I'm just gonna name this CSV GSD tweets um, dot CSV, and then I'm just gonna call in this function to execute. Because if you don't, uh, if you don't place this, then our function is basically not going to execute. Because it will just seem like you just uh, like you just uh, specifying a variable name. So we need to give that a function so that it actually executes. So I'm just gonna run that. And it runs successfully. So now, if we go back to a column, we'll find out that we now have a GSD tweet. So let me just open this Excel file and see what kind of records do we have, and was our data actually stored in the CSV file in the way and format that we needed. So let me just give that a few minutes to open, and it did open. So this is basically our CSV file. As you can see here, within the created, uh, in the created section, we have our dating, we have our date and time within uh, the default uh, using the default uh, time zone that was already there so these are basically our tweets so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be going through each and every names of these tweets because I'll probably be violating uh, like the privacy or I don't know because I, I haven't actually read the Twitter terms but anyway since we had uh, those number of records let me just go over to the end of the file and see if we have the same number so we have uh, this is uh, this is our uh, row number 227 so subtracting the, the row which has uh, just the titles that means we have 226 records in this csv file and uh, remember our length above here it said we have 226 tweets so basically it means that we have all these tweets within our csv file okay so there are other things that you can perform with this within, within using this twitter uh, api and these Jupyter notebooks in ArcGIS API. So now, since we haven't implemented any of the ArcGIS API here, except for when we just had to sign in into our notebooks, we can actually publish. Uh, we can actually publish. Um, we can actually publish this CSV over to our ArcGIS uh, online. But I'm not going to be doing that in this tutorial because I already did that in another previous tutorial. So if you don't know how to publish your CSV files and convert them into feature layers. I, I, I would rather recommend that you go over to the last tutorials that we did this and you can see how you can do it so I'm basically going to release out uh, a map of all these uh, global surveyors day uh, tweets and um, 
hopefully i'll get to share this on my social media and so that you guys can see how best we can use this but i'm not going to i'm not going to be creating a tutorial for you because i already covered that on publishing so yeah so this is how you can uh, actually get to mine data from social media so there are a lot of apis and you can actually use the facebook api you can actually use uh, the linkedin api uh, i don't know how which social media uh, platforms you guys are on but uh, yeah you can also use the like the youtube api to like to actually uh perform some spatial analysis or even map out like just for fun like uh yeah i normally like doing uh these kind of mappings uh just to display like some of my skills and enhance, enhance some of my skills so anyway uh if you like this tutorial please uh don't forget to share and like this video also and also subscribe to the channel and thank you guys for watching hope to see you uh, in future videos